we've often put forward the premise that within our very distant past, a cataclysm occurred, or more precisely, a great flood. Many surviving ancient sites around the world bear the scars of this event. The Great Pyramids of Giza, for example, still held chambers flooded with ancient seawater deep within their bowels until very recently. Much of this evidence slowly removed over the past few decades. And our next ancient structure is no different. Known as Adams Bridge, it is an astonishing feature which stretches 30 kilometers, connecting southern India with Sri Lanka, believed to date from a pre-Diluvian age, some 1.7 million years ago. Several individuals who have taken the time to explore this ancient ruin have concluded that it is indeed artificial. However, with a dating of over 1.5 million years, it is clearly a site that academia will continue to reject as actually being man-made, regardless of the mounting data in favor of such a reality. It seems that regardless of the overwhelming evidence that the mountain of unexplained accomplishments by our quote, primitive ancestors, modern scholars of many subjects continue an existence in complete denial of these truths. Dr. Bajra Narayanan, former director of the geological survey within India, performed an in-depth analysis of the suspected bridge's makeup. His research concluded that the Adams Bridge was indeed an artificial man-made structure, one which stretches far back into the unknown history of our planet. Below the surface, they found organized layers of sandstone blocks, coral boulders, and other cement-like substances. Several divers investigated the length of the bridge and concluded that its entire layout was indeed of an organized and thus artificial nature. The survey also revealed extremely ancient evidence of intense quarrying was also left within the surrounding area, these materials matching those placed carefully within the causeway itself. Interestingly, ancient Hindu legend from the area agrees that this enormous feature is indeed a now-submerged, gigantic earthwork, stating that it was built for the god Rama in order to help him cross the land to the large island, to rescue his beloved from a demon. Is Adam's Bridge really a huge pre-Diluvian sunken artifact? a 30-kilometer man-made bridge which once connected the two countries? It's an amazing proposition, and the more we learn about the amazing history which was lost here on our planet, the more it seems like a real possibility. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. There are many intriguing ancient ruins still to be explored, still in existence dotting our planet, many of which are yet to be fully explained. Enigmatic stone carvings, and often tool marks left upon quarried or cracked or broken stones, each indicative of lost technology and thus a lost civilization. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, the Plain of Jars located in Laos being but one of these extraordinary sites. Enormous stone jars that would simply be illogical to create in the modern era, yet would have been even more illogical for our well-studied yet far less capable ancient ancestors to have created them. Why these mysterious sculptures were created, and possibly most important of all, when they were made, is an enigma still left within our past. And the Kachari ruins are of no exception. A set of stone ruins located in Dimapur, Nagaland, northeast India. According to academia, their history dates back to the 10th century when they apparently appeared during what is now known as the Kachari Civilization. According to this hypothesis, they were created by the Kachari Kingdom, which ruled the area before the Anam invasion during the 13th century AD. They are a series of mushroom dome pillars, which, just like that of the ancient jars of Laos, their original purpose remains a complete mystery. And although of considerable size and weight, are still considered to have once been a part of a game similar to that of chess, yet any explanation of how these enormous statues were moved remains conveniently unexplained. As expected, due to their inexplicable nature, the site has been largely overlooked by funded academia. It seems that the fact that these remnants are clearly indicative of a civilization of tremendous capabilities, including the refined finish of the sculptures, has meant that academics simply avoid discussing or exploring the site in its entirety. Not only is the site neglected by academic study, but the vast majority of these ancient artifacts have unfortunately crumbled during their long life, which has led many alternative researchers to volley against the Indian government, 
demanding that more be done to protect the site and to subsequently avoid the ancient site from suffering even more erosion or of unfortunate vandalism. Who created the Kachari ruins? When were they created? What was its original purpose? It seems, regardless of these questions being of great historical importance, what is apparently more precious to funded individuals and the institutions in which their conformity to existing, yet highly disputed chronologies of man subsequently prop up their selected fields of apparent study, and are more than willing to aid in the continuation of fallacies, if that means the continued survival of their field of choice. It would appear that these ancient stoneworks, each of an enormous size, are all ancient uparts, whose sheer existence is enough of a deterrent for academia to even mention the existence of, let alone publish any explanatory studies of the ruins, absent any published journals. Away from academic ignorance, however, the local population inevitably has their own supposed surviving story regarding the creation and origins of the stones, which now forms a nice amalgam of Indian mythology. As per this mythology, Bahim and Hadimba got married at the site in antiquity, later giving birth to Gadoka at the site. And according to this local folklore, it's said that Bahim and his child used to play chess here with these pieces. And although clearly of mythology, it is better to attribute the ruins and to attempt an explanation in regards to a creator of tremendous capabilities, we feel. Better this than what we currently experience complete ignorance of this precious yet highly delicate, still surviving ancient ruins. It is a place which we find highly compelling. The Earth, the blue marble, the third rock from the sun, and the place we all call home. Our entire existence, the entirety of humanity's experience, apart from a few space missions of course, all occurred here upon our planet. The entirety of humanity, and as so far discovered or publicly disclosed, home to the entire fabric of advanced multicellular life within the entire infinity of our universe, all resting upon this tiny water-covered sphere, spinning its way through what would appear to be an endless space, a vast darkness, an unending void, yet one that is far from empty. For example, just within the observable universe, every nanometer of the sky, drenched in fusion producing balls of fire, stars, and other bodies, many of which are nearly identical to our sun. Yet our living planet has a double-edged sword, violent volcanic eruption, whose core is still molten, a geological consequence of a relatively young planet. All of life's complex ecosystems, many of which we depend upon each day, live on a knife edge. The sheer size of space, the vast emptiness, could be seen as a safety cushion. For in such an empty place, our tiny planetary body fills hardly a fraction of even our own galaxy. However, it's filled with moving bodies, comets set hurtling through space by past ancient events could one day hit our Earth and have indeed done so in the past. And as mentioned in our previous video, we believe man may have experienced at least one of these events before, yet by luck or preparation, we survived. This assertion due to our in-depth research into the evidence of the many lost civilizations. In an instant, all this natural beauty, all this seemingly fanatical trial and evolutionary error gone. All these marvelous creations, innovations, varieties, and even entire genuses gone in an instant, wiped from all but fossilized memory. Resetting our flourishing planet to a near ball of dust and ash, something we claim the academically denied ancient civilizations were also aware of. Here on our channel, we posit that the event the dinosaurs experienced, a catastrophic natural event, one which nearly wiped them all from the face of the earth, leaving only a handful of small-scale creatures, that man have experienced such events, and that the survivors of such not only went on to flourish, but went to great effort to not only prove they were once here, but were incredibly capable. 
Thus, as such, we believe ancients from all over the world, who are in communication with each other, please peruse our work on metal clamps, polygonal masonry, on the Bosda Caves, and our many other videos, tool signatures, and so on, for support of this claim of a once world-going superpower. They deliberately chose incredibly hard stone, often sourced from many miles away, incredibly hard to work. These granite, basalt, sandstone, and other stone megaliths, additionally often of gigantic size, would survive the test of time, resisting a tremendous amount before fading into the chasm of history. We claim this to have been done to say we were here. Long Yu Caves and Yangshan Quarry, China, Petra, Jordan, Aswan Quarry, Egypt, Bosda Cave, and many other sites display the same curious stone cut as our anomaly in question in tonight's video. Located within India, a country drenched in antiquity, much mysterious, baffling, and just as awe-inspiring as any other sites found anywhere else on Earth. One such feature, the Butterwell. It's located within a group of monuments at Mahabali Puram. Not only does it appear as a giant drill hole into solid rock, but the tool marks, far too symmetrical to have been created with primitive tools, as suggested, is but yet another anomaly which we claim displays several proofs of a hidden history and indeed technological creation. We find the butter well highly compelling. There are many astonishing ancient ruins which can be found throughout India. Ancient temples or caverns, often carved into giant boulders or directly out of the bedrock of Earth itself. Many of these ruins drenched in exquisite artwork, carvings created with such vision and accuracy that they boggle the minds of all who attempt to explain the methodology of their creator. We have covered a number of sites within India in the past many of them so precise in their finish that they could have seemingly only been created using precision stone-cutting technology. And our next site of interest is of no exception. Located in the northern part of the state of Karnataka in South India, the village of Hampi has some extremely captivating ruins. Dotted with large boulders, the site is also home to some extremely puzzling relics, one of which is the ancient chariot clearly a depiction of a once astonishing creation. The cart itself was not only clearly massive, but was pulled with elephants rather than horses. Clearly indicative of a highly capable group, this incredible chariot is one amongst an array of marvelously preserved architectural artifacts, most of which display a level of refinement created with such precision that modern man could only replicate such feats using machines something modern academia claims has only ever been utilized by our own modern civilization. Thus, an explanation as to how the site, or indeed its smorgasbord of ancient precision-made stoneworks were made, eludes us to this day. And we hypothesize that the reason for this is due to mainstream historians' reluctance to consider what these ruins clearly indicate, that they were once the work of a civilization that was not only highly advanced, but utilized stone-cutting technologies, methods of transportation, lifting and placement that rival even that of today's architectural capabilities. How can one peer upon such sites as that of Hampi, or indeed others, Pumapunku, Giza, Petra, etc., sites created with such accuracy that to suggest they were created with soft metal tools or with the use of primitive measuring equipment is simply absurd. Furthermore, none of these ruins would be possible simply with the use of the human eye. The only logical explanation is that just like that of modern-day stonework, the stones were indeed machined, cut to such a high quality using precision tools, only then were they placed where they lay today. Hampi was predictably re-inhabited by ancestors based within permitted timelines, once being the capital of a previous Indian empire. What's intriguing about the site, however, is the mysterious, seemingly untouched boulders which dot its grounds. The question is, although they now appear to be geological, 
Were they in fact once relics themselves, left by an even earlier civilization? If not, then why were these stones left where they are found today? Why were they built around rather than utilized, carved, or shifted? They were clearly once of significance, and due to the fact ancient sanctuaries and fortresses are often re-inhabited, the possibility that they were indeed once carvings would logically make sense. The questions would be, just how old is this civilization? Who built the ancient site of Hampi? How did they build it? Were ancient high technologies utilized in its creation? If not, then how was it constructed? It is a place which we find highly compelling.